Hello, everyone. Welcome to our episode of It's Me, Not You. I am joined by my fabulous co-host. Hello, Melissa. Hello. Hello, Jake. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey, girl. Hey. So on today's episode, we kind of want to talk about manifesting and kind of maybe what are our steps and process of how we manifest the things that we desire, maybe some tips and tricks, and also can we manifest super negative things such as losing your job or your child having cancer? So Melissa wanted to talk about this topic. So I'm going to tee it off to Melissa. Melissa, talk to me about manifesting. So, yeah, I wanted to talk about manifesting because it's a buzzword that a lot of people use. And I'm not sure that a lot of people really understand, um, you know, what it all is and really how to work with it. So taking the time today to talk about how you set your intentions, um, kind of what manifesting is, you know, in definition for you. And then, you know, the, the part about the gratefulness that comes after you've manifested something Mm -hmm. and then just taking time today to talk about some of our pitfalls, you know, some of the ways that we've manifested things in our lives, um, and kind of really go from there to help our listeners out with tackling the big things that they want for themselves. I think one of the things that's difficult when we manifest is we're, we're taught not to ask for too much. And I think you should woo tail in the, in the video here. Um, I think you should ask for whatever it is you really want, you know, break your glass ceilings. Oh yeah. You got things too big. And I think that's where a lot of people feel, well, I can't ask for that. You know, we're taught, well, you can only ask for things for other people. No, you can ask for whatever you want for yourself. Absolutely. I know Maggie's here to just knock down that stereotype. Maggie needs uh, it. uh, She's here to manifest. She (laughs) wants the treats that are in my hand to keep her busy. (laughs) You know, I totally agree. Like as far, I always talk to my clients about, you know, when you are manifesting, you know, cast your net wide open, you know, because Mm. I, I forget who said it. I, I heard this on a podcast or heard this uh, in an audio, audio book years ago. It might've been Clep Baron Reed. Um, she, they were talking about, you know, we as humans already have that ego in all of the aspects of our work. And mm-hmm. so in that way, we will limit possibilities for ourselves, possibilities or how far something can manifest or how far a blessing could go um, without us, you know, running into, you know, issues of humility or, or um, not wanting to take too, too much or ask too, too much or take it from somebody else's opportunity. Right. Um, so I always tell people cash net wide open. So I would always say, you know, if you're praying, manifesting, if you're doing some kind of law of attraction work, you know, I always tell people, you know, end your statement with that or something better, that or something yeah. better, because it leaves wiggle room to be proven, like to be proven right or proven that there's a different opportunity for you beyond what you think is only right for you. I always tell people think of manifesting kind of like when you're in the McDonald's drive through you ordered a four piece, but they gave you an eight piece. Mm -hmm. You didn't ask for the eight piece, but you are willing, you are gladly accepting it when it comes to that window. You know what I mean? So it's definitely one of those things. Leave yourself wiggle room. It's, it's kind of like, you know, a, a science experiment. You have to leave wiggle room for different variables and different skews in the hypothesis and whatnot. And you also have to put work into it. You know, if you're trying to manifest, um, you know, something for your, let's say you're trying to manifest, I don't know, a new snowblower and, you know, all of a sudden you see an ad for one that's cheap, you're still going to have to like reach out to do that part of it. I think that's where people get stuck is like, well, it should just appear. Things don't necessarily just appear like as that object. You have to put the work in once they show you here's your path. Now, don't you think that this is a beautiful time to talk about the difference between manifesting and attracting? Yes. Yes. Because I think that it seems like the general public might have an understanding of manifesting where it really seems like we're talking about attracting, you know, like that whole, like putting the sentiment out there and kind of keeping that thought near and close to your heart, which in a way is a form of manifesting, but in and of itself, if we're not doing anything beyond that, we're really just attracting, you know, and that can be good or bad. You know, for me personally in manifestation work, I've got, 
So let's say if it is that I'm trying to manifest a snowblower, let's say, or a leaf blower, then I'm at the same time being proactive of how can I actively wait on that opportunity? What can I do to be proactive and attract opportunities to earn extra cash or opportunities to find somebody who knows better than I to get their hands on something that's affordable and accessible to me? You know, um, attracting um, a community of people that can help me in that process. Um, yeah, there are several little things that you can do to kind of bridge that gap between your goal and what we're trying to manifest. You know, action requests is mm -hmm. kind of how I like to refer to, um, to them. Um, I think, whereas the, though, oh, go I think ahead. the biggest thing with manifesting is that the how is not up to us. You know, there are certain steps that, you know, I like to teach clients about how to go through when they're trying to manifest their desires. And like you guys said, the first is what is exactly that you're desiring? You know, what is it in your heart that you really want to kind of bring forward in this physical reality? And another thing I always say is that God wouldn't put these desires in your heart unless they weren't meant to come true. You know, we all have different desires. We all have different wants and needs in life. And it is super important that we kind of break that ceiling, kind of move past it to show what's possible because we're all limitless beings okay. and we all have the power to kind of design the life of our dreams because we're co-creators with universe and divine. And so for me, it's definitely going down kind of my steps of something. It's like, you know, number one, get clear, get clear on what is it that you desire, get clear on what you want. And then look at that list and kind of what is it that you tell yourself that you can't have it? You know, like maybe like Melissa said, well, I, I don't think I can ask for something that big. I don't think I can ask for a Porsche when I'm driving a you know, a junker, you know, there's all these kind of thoughts and limiting beliefs that run around in our head. And that's being the gentle observer of that. Mm -hmm. And then you want to recognize and reframe it because a lot of the bullshit lies that we tell ourselves are that they're just bullshit lies. There are things that we've, you know, put in our conscious or subconscious. There may be, you know, limiting beliefs, maybe contracts, vows, oath agreements that we've kind of taken on. How many healers do you know? Vow of poverty. A vow oh, of absolutely. not being seen, you know, that, that can affect your manifesting ability. And then you think the new thought. So yeah, I'm a divine being. I'm capable of manifesting anything that I desire. And I'm going to throw that out to the universe. And then you believe in the new thought, really, really honing in and believing with that <clears throat> new thought. And then you vibe with it. Cause that's when you take in your emotional, cause really when you vibe with the emotion of it, that's where the magic sauce is really, truly like, let's say, what does it feel like in your body to have $10,000 a month? Yeah. Feel, Where do you feel it in your body? Yeah. How does it make you feel? Visualization. Yeah. How, how does it, but then you want to expand that out. You know, that's where it, you're breaking your ceiling. 100%. No? And for like our viewers, I like to refer to that as integration. So yeah. integration is, you know, viewing that future version of yourself mm -hmm. that has what you're looking for, what you're asking for. Or if it's that we're manifesting or trying to step into a space of a healed version of ourselves, yeah. a healed aspect of our life or mm -hmm. storyline, yeah. um, you know, we look towards that future self because again, time is is up and down rather than side to side so we are already in that space we just have to accept it step into that and say okay what does it look like for me to radically accept all of the change and all of the healing that brought me mm -hmm. to that space um you know got we gotta think big you know we're think you think it's small gotta think big. Yeah, think big and then i do want to keep going after you vibe with that and you really truly felt into it that's when you release it out to the universe that's yeah. when you're releasing, you're letting it go. And then like Melissa said, that's when you're going to be led to take divine line inspired action, because yes, we can vibe with the thought. We can have these thoughts and desires. We can have these wants, but if we don't get into action, it's not that Prince Charming is going to knock on your door because you're, you know, in bed watching Netflix, you know, it, it, may, yeah. it may, it may, it may, it may happen for some, <laughs> and then you receive it. And then you're, you're into that attitude of gratitude. And that's what really supercharges your manifesting abilities you're continuing to break ceilings you just you know because once you I feel like for you guys and I'm sure it's just, for me I know it's the same once I've started to really get clear on what I desire and really lay out the groundwork and realize that I just surrender to the universe uh, the how is not up to me because I might think oh I'm going to receive this money through my job well that's constricting mm -hmm. my energy that's, that's kind of, that's closing up other channels that, or, or maybe my partner inherits money. 
you know, we, we have to kind of, I do think we get stuck in how we may receive something, you know, and that might clog up your energy for manifesting. And when I, uh, yeah, and I release it to the universe and then I'm really opening up that channel to manifest. Go ahead, Melissa. Well, just thinking too, we get a little stuck in the words like, well, you mm-hmm. have to say it this way, or it must be that way. And then you get so tangled up that mm-hmm. you're just like, forget it. I don't even want to ask for anything because this person says I need to ask this way, or I can't use this word. But once you, like Rachel said, you get into the feeling of it, it's, it's being specific and clear, mm-hmm. like he said, but don't get so caught up in, well, I didn't use the right action word for it. No, just and- speak from your heart. Right. And the other thing is, is that when people are manifesting where they also start to beat themselves up is when a negative thought pops up, you know, you're, you're going to cycle into, Oh, I'm just not good enough. And that's where you're kind of, you're got to reframe the thoughts. You got to feel into it. And then it's almost like you're reaffirming what your desires and your wants are and what you're trying to manifest. Mm -hmm. And then I think like Jake said, there is a difference between attracting something and manifesting something because I might attract a negative situation I didn't intentionally manifest that. I'm not manifesting. I don't want this to happen in my life. I'm attracting that. And that's a great point too, because I mean, again, with the whole manifesting process, it really is more of a, I don't know, the witchy part of me is going to say a ceremony Mm -hmm. or more of like a ritual process to it. So there's a lot of steps to it and you have to make sure that you're, it really is quite scientific at least for the way that I perceive it and experience it I do. you know because you can be manifesting this new job opportunity but if you have fears in regards to poverty consciousness or maybe mm. you had an upbringing that does not reflect that kind of future for you mm-hmm. maybe the inner child couldn't foresee that kind of future for yourself mm-hmm. if you still have that kind of healing work to do then that kind of stuff might be attracting things that are still holding you back yeah. or attracting a space or an energy of non-movement you know, mm-hmm. and I, then at the flip side of that, I think that there's something to be said and a reminder to our friends that, you know, manifesting is a beautiful and powerful tool to use your own personal power to change yeah. your your path. But at the same time, we can't use manifesting to bypass lessons and opportunities mm-hmm. that needed to happen first. So True. if I'm trying to manifest, you know, a, a big corporate position at my at my company, but I'm still just an intern that only just started, then maybe I do have to step into that one in between job area where I do hate it for a couple months. But then I do find the connections in big corporate that I was looking to do, you know, that I was looking to make and that are going to be the ones that kind of pull me up to that next space. So there's different aspects to look at it. And I do think that a big thing of manifesting is radical acceptance Mm -hmm. of Mm -hmm. what's what's immediately for me right now and what maybe I have to kind of work with I in my personal experience I really feel like manifesting really just more or less hurries up the process of introducing you to those next couple of stepping stones and however fast you choose to work through those or integrate those or can integrate those is kind of just up to you you know Mm -hmm. and if we try to do it a little bit too fast that might be a little bit jarring (laughs) you know maybe we haven't had the necessary growth or the necessary rest in between to accommodate that kind of shift you know it's interesting as healers um really a lot of people fear of success you know a fear of oh yeah really kind of modifying and and shifting your life to this beautiful empowered vision that you have for it some people are that truly you know backs them off and they're you know because they're used to be having an uncomfortable life that's where you become comfortable and mm. it, it's fat. It's interesting when they start to shift out of that mindset and that feeling. And then it's like, I mean, I don't know about for you guys, but I like to stair step my manifesting. Yeah. You know, like I might want to like stair step my income, stair step what I'm receiving stair step. And then it doesn't feel as, Oh my gosh. Cause I, I know I can identify it now. And I, I think I can shift into a different mindset a lot quicker then maybe mm-hmm. I could a couple of years ago, like, oh, this is coming up again. Oh, I, I'm, oh, this is coming up again. I got to, I got to peel back another layer. I got to do some energetic work on it. And then I can kind of retune what it is that I'm trying to call in. And for me, I, I, I like to journal. I like to write out my reality. I like to really put in my big vision. And I like to do that actually quite often. And then I'll set, I'll put affirmations to it. I'll feel into it. For me, the biggest thing is feeling into it and having that energy 
kind of once I know what it's like to receive it and then pushing that out, that that's where, for me, I, I find a lot of the magic with manifesting. One of the things I'll do when I write mine out is I write on the back of it, why I'm deserving of it. Mm -hmm. and what I bring to the table for it. Mm -hmm. Because that really gets out all of the positive aspects of what you're asking for. Uh Uh-oh. (laughs) Uh-oh. We lost Melissa. (laughs) Jake, take it away. Hello, everybody. Uh (laughs) (laughs) She'll be right back. (laughs) Sorry, I growl a little bit with this technical error. Um... Oh my God. It's like, uh, we're having spirit contact with her. I can hear the growling, but I can't see her. Oh my goodness. Where's Melissa? You've lost her. <laughs> it's like in Poltergeist, the little girl on the TV. <laughs> oh, yeah. That was Take like my, my scary hand. dream. So maybe we'll just wrap up our manifesting episode because there's so much energy obviously mm-hmm. coming in before we started. Kuan Yin was visiting with Melissa and Jake said she was surrounded by, oh, there she is. Here we go. Melissa part two. Take my hand. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa, welcome back. I can't no, it's you. like all the power just like flicked and then <laughs> everything shut down and restarted. So I guess I have to be careful about talking about my energy with manifesting. All right, we'll finish what you're talking because we're going to wrap up this episode because we're afraid of technical issues. <laughs> <laughs> I know during, during Mercury retrograde. No, so I'm just saying, like when you write down what you bring to the table for things, it empowers mm-hmm. what you're trying to manifest with positive. So not being so worried about how you're saying, but just knowing this is why I deserve this. Cause like you yeah. said, we have these unconscious blocks, but you don't want to focus on the block. You want to focus on the positive mm-hmm. of why it's meant for you. And then the hard part, I think, is accepting it when it's there like yes you know you deserve it but then when it's right in front of you you're like really I can have this this is okay but it's you know it's saying yes this is for me and thank you and gratitude after and you know what I think it's something to be said just to remind everybody that although you might not feel that you know overtly confident energy in your everyday life maybe you're somebody who's more introverted so it's a hard time for you to take up space or to kind of claim space and be like oh this is my opportunity this is my time I deserve x y and z and you know what and another thing on top of that you know so when I tell everybody you know the biggest tip for successful manifesting spell work prayer work energy work personal development in your personal bubble you are the one, you know, like you are the badass OG and you deserve everything. When you are here in your personal space, attracting all of your stuff, you're going to get it, you know, because you're that effing powerful. You have to have that mindset because uh, being in that mind space is such a powerful catalyst. Um, in, in terms of witchcraft, I call this chaos magic, where it is this radical kind of chaotic energy that we stir up within ourselves, that badass kind of warrior vibe. And that really does kind of slingshot into the universe and it does disrupt the waves a little bit. And that's how I really find that radical kind of growth comes through is when you're just like, you know what? I am going to boil that all up right here and I'm going to slingshot that to the universe. And I know for a fact, I'm going to hit the fucking bullseye. You just have to step into that space. And then if you don't buy it afterwards, that's on you. But it does help when you step into that space and have fun stepping into it. Play music, you know, think about like a badass character from a book or a movie that you really just feel inspired by. Um, Think of Cher. That always helps. Um, Think of Tina Turner. Exactly. Exactly. Think of your power people and allow them to inspire you too. The real ones, the fictional ones, goddesses, all that stuff. Stepping into that kind of energy is so effective. And I definitely invite everybody to try that at home. And before we wrap up, I know Melissa wanted to um, talk about like, if you're trying to manifest a new thing and something happens, like maybe you lose a job, Mm. is that manifesting is that manifesting gone wrong or is that just an unfortunate circumstance, Melissa? Yeah. So I don't, you know, sometimes things have to be cleared out of our path in order for us to get to what we're looking for. And let's say you're trying to manifest a new job and you lose your job. 
well, are you walking around your office or wherever you work saying, I hate it here. I want a new job. Well, of course, you know, with that type of energy that you're putting into it, you probably are going to lose your job. Or if the universe keeps showing you all these new jobs, like here's what you've asked for, here's what you've asked for, and you won't take the step and you keep manifesting, you may lose that job Mm -hmm. because they are like, hey, it's right here. How else can I get you to see? How else can I get you to move in the direction that you're asking for? But I don't believe that if you have pure intention for something that you're going to cause like negative things to happen. Mm -hmm because you said it wrong. I love going to, like I've had readings. It's like, oh, you're asking too much for it. And then you go to the next one and they're like, oh, you haven't been asking enough. Like the universe knows my heart. It's not exactly. about too much or too little. My heart is clear. And your energy exactly. is clear. Mm-hmm. And you know what? Even try, like if you're doing manifesting work or prayer work or just doing, you know, law of attraction stuff, why not just shift your focus? If you're worrying about the words that you're using, then why don't you just focus on the feeling? Absolutely. How it will feel when you've attracted that, when you've stepped into it. What does the energy around you feel like? The spirit understands your feeling and your intention behind that. So don't get caught up in the word because that's where the ego comes in and thinks that we're having to choose things precisely. We don't always know everything ahead of time. So it's okay. And also what the feeling is, it doesn't have to be like joy, you know, like it doesn't have to be set <laughs> feelings. You can feel relieved. You can yeah. feel expansive. You can feel whatever you know, that comes right to you, that's going to be the perfect right emotion to feel into. Absolutely. And then just, just practice pushing that out more like, Oh, joy, happiness, relief, freedom. For me, I'm all about, I want freedom. You know, I don't want to work a nine to five every single year of my life. You know, I want freedom, Mm -hmm. freedom, travel, freedom to do what I want when I want to do it with who I want to do it. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. So one of the little tidbits spirit gave me yesterday, because I took a lot of time out with myself is they talked about birth, you know, mm-hmm. when we're born, like literally what we go through and what our mothers go through to get us here, it's a bit of trauma. Yeah. Um. So, you know, for this rebirth, for your manifesting, you probably are going to have to pass through the eye of a needle in some energetic way. So just recognize that that is your birthing of whatever new process, yeah. new manifesting that you're looking for. It's not fun. It's not when we're born either, but we don't have to remember that uh, luckily, but we will remember this part. And that that's the step of being the gentle observer, being okay with allowing some of these limiting beliefs to come up. And the reasons why you tell yourself one to think small two that I'm not, I can't have it, you know, really looking into that and really kind of feeling into it and then reframing and shifting it. And then you know, maybe you're doing some shadow work. Maybe you're doing some journaling. Maybe you're doing a, a moon ceremony where you're howling at the moon or you're burning something and you're just letting go of that energetic aspect that's still clinging on to you. Mm-hmm. Anything else you want to guys add before our computers crash again? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Melissa's does. <laughs> I didn't have my shungite. It's my bad. Um, yeah, go big or go home. Yeah, do it. I mean, we have we have this one life to live. Let's live it to its fullest. That's right. And you know what? I invite everybody to sit with, you know, how they experience selfishness and how they experience modesty. Mm. Um, and I would love for you to take a look at how that affects maybe the way that you manifest or maybe the way that you mm. ask for opportunities. That's um, interesting. And then in turn accept them. That's you know? interesting. I like that because it's almost like you're not being a narcissist. You're you're just asking for what you desire. Yeah. Right. What's wrong with that? Mm-hmm. And self-care is not selfish. No, it's not. <laughs> Another episode. All right. Melissa, anything else you want to add before we wrap this up? Nope. Just shoot for the moon. You can ask for anything you want and you can have it. Amen. Amen. Well, Boom. thank you. Boom. Mic drop. Well, we'd love <laughs> to hear about anyone and what, what amazing things they've manifested and everyone take care and have a great day. Bye. 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 Bye.